Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Monday, April 15th, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alrighty, so we're at the last of the parables in this kind of little mini-series that we've had for the last few weeks. This is uh, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Uh, the Pharisee of the, uh, the, Pharisee of the, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. There we go. Uh, all right, begin with verse 9. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank, thee, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. All right, um, very straightforward uh, parable for us today. Um, and this is another nice one where Jesus tells us, um, or I'm sorry, Luke tells us um, what is going on here, um, who Jesus is telling this to um, in regard to what um, attitude, what issue. And he says to, he's telling this to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. So those who would um, seek to justify themselves, who um, regarded themselves, well, trusted in, in that they were righteous in and of themselves. You know, like we trust that we are righteous through Christ. You know, that is only through Christ that we are, are righteous. That's where our righteousness comes from. But this would be those who trusted in themselves that they were righteous. So they, their righteousness comes from who they are, what they do, um, their station in life, whatever. Whatever it is about them, um, that is what they would trust in for their righteousness. So who I am makes me pleasing to God. What I do makes me pleasing to God. Um, whatever the case may be. Uh, and then in addition to that, what leads out of that would then be a contempt for others um, for whatever reason. Because um, likely, my, my guess would be that, um, you know, when, when somebody who justifies himself, somebody who puffs themselves up and says, you know, I am righteous in of myself, when they see other people, you know, not being righteous, you know, and especially in, in the religious context, saying, well, you... God wants us to be righteous, right? Um, and I look at myself and I say, through through all of my hard work, through my dedication, I have made myself righteous. And then this person would look at somebody else who is not. Um, the contempt that they might have for that person is, well, why aren't you working hard enough? Why aren't you elevating yourself? Why aren't you doing the hard work involved in becoming righteous? Um, and, you know, just kind of snowballing from there. An example is, is this Pharisee naturally, <laughs> who, um, you know, stands by himself um, and, and prays, you know, thank, thank you, God, that I'm not like all these other horrible people, all these sinners, including this tax collector who's, who's standing right near him. Um, and then he goes on to say, you know, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all, he, of all that I get. So he is, um, there's no humility in him whatsoever. He, he regards himself as better than others. Um, better than, than these sinners. And, and so we actually see the distinction that he is not like those sinners. There's sinners and then there's him. So he's even divided himself off from the sinners. And, um, you know, he does the religious requirements for, for the law. You know, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I get. I, I'm a good law keeper. Therefore, I am righteous. But then the tax collector who stands far off, so the, the image is the Pharisee who's just standing right there and is like right in the middle of the action. The tax collector is apart. He doesn't even you know, feel like coming forward. He's, he's off in the back. Um, wouldn't even 
lift his eyes to heaven. You know, couldn't even look up towards God, right? And just beats his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He has nothing to offer. Um, he doesn't appeal to God for any, um, according to anything that he has or, or anything that he is. Um, the only thing he can possibly do is appeal to God's mercy. So God, be merciful to me. You know, a, a plea for God's mercy and a, a confession that he is a sinner. Um, you know, he's not... Like the Pharisee is, is outlining, like n naming all the people he's better than. He's numbering his good deeds, right? This, the uh, tax collector doesn't do that. He, he doesn't say, well, you know, I've sinned in this way, this way, this way. He's just, I am a sinner. So he's not even approaching it in terms of saying like, these are the bad things I've done, but otherwise I'm okay. <laughs> like these, these are the things that, that this is why I'm, I'm a bad person. But other than that, things are cool. He says, no, I am a sinner. You know, his, everything is his, the sin attached to it because he is a sinner. He doesn't just sin. He's a sinner. And that's kind of the distinction that we like to make. Um, when people want to kind of draw lines of distinction there is that we, we don't, we're not a sinner. Um, because we sin, we sin because we are sinners. Okay. Um, that's, sin flows out from it um you know sin is sin is not some foreign thing that that, that uh, is is apart from us that when it's like sin is out here and so when we when we when we're over here we're good but then we when we engage with sin that that's what makes us a sinner it's like no we're sin is in here <laughs> so um the moral of the story is that the tax collector went home justified you know, because he confessed his sin and God is faithful and just to forgive his sin and cleanse him, cleanse him of all unrighteousness. Um, the Pharisee did not. Um, he did not go home justified because he was trying to self-justify. And, and that's what all that means is to stand before God and to justify yourself is to say, here are all the reasons why I deserve your grace, your mercy, your, your love, your affection, your everything. You know, here's why I deserve this. I'm justifying myself before you self-justification. Um, this man appealed to a foreign justification from outside of him, God's justification um, on account of his mercy. So um, very, like I said, very straightforward parable. Um, there's no, um, there's no twists at the end here. No, no gotcha kind of moment. It's just a very, um, very honest parable about, you know, everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted that we, we gain nothing by puffing up our pride and our ego and trying to find all these wonderful things in and of ourselves that are so great that God himself would take notice and, and commend us for it. It's like, no. <laughs> we, we say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And then we are made righteous through Christ. Um, you know, we, we confess that we are a sinner and, and the good news comes to us and says, oh, well, hey, Christ died for sinners. He, he, he takes sinners, he washes them clean, forgives them, and makes them alive in him. So, awesome. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Very, very nice uh, parable to end on in this uh, little series we had. So, Luke, once again, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Monday. Hope you have a great day uh, today. I hope your week starts off well. And I will see you tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.